We get a lot of questions about diaphragmatic absorption and people are always wondering, well, why, why do you use diaphragmatic absorption? Um, why is it better than, than other technologies out there? Um, and tell us a little bit about how it works. Well, I think when we, we go through this example, um, you'll, you'll get a pretty good idea of, of how it works. And we think pound for pound, it's the most powerful absorption technology, uh, been used for years. We've modified and changed it considerably, uh, especially in our freestanding units. But let's look at the process and, and I think you'll, you'll get a handle on, on how it works. When sound energy is in our room and it strikes the construction of the unit, diaphragmatic absorber, we have in our product, we have two walls on the front. Now these walls uh, took us a long time to figure out the thickness and the density and even how to mount them so that they do move. Now when I say move, I mean if you look at them you can't see them moving. They're not a diaphragm in the, in the same way that a speaker is. You know, it's, it's not a transducer. But they do move. If you take vibrational analysis readings of them, they do move. And, and the goal was to, to get these to move in sympathy, I guess, would be the best way to say it, so that they, what, they slow that wave down, that big pressure wave down. Remember from past uh, videos, the, the low frequency waves are very long, they're very tall, fat, if you will, lots of energy behind them, so we got to slow them down. Well, standard diaphragmatic absorbers use just one wall. Well, we, we decided, let, let's try the two wall approach and see if we can get a little bit more uh, slowing, if you will, of the energy down. Now, you can also put foam on the face. That's what we do with our stuff. So you can really get a low frequency absorber, a middle and a high frequency absorber all in one unit. And you can control the rate and level of absorption with the foam. And you can also control the rate and level of absorption inside the absorber. Here's where our carbon comes in. Our carbon it is a huge absorbing element inside the unit and the unit is sealed so I don't want to say it's a vacuum inside but let, let's use that as an example so the sound energy strikes these two walls gets gets slowed down if you will and then it enters the inside of the cabinet and what does it strike well it strikes the activated carbon inside of it and it also there's also a thing known as Q value which is the component of absorption in that small amount of space. So we have a very high Q because inside this little cabinet that's two foot by four foot by maybe a foot deep, we have over 65 pounds of, of carbon inside of it. So we get a very high rate and level of absorption inside the unit. So the energy strikes the front two walls, goes through the front two walls, goes in and hits the activated carbon and then some of the energy simply leaves the cabinet. I mean you cannot contain all the energy. This is why the term base trap is really misleading because nothing really traps base. Nothing really stops it. I mean just building barriers to stop it is difficult. We built one the other day was 18 inches thick and we still didn't stop at all. So it's it's manage is the, is the word we're looking for. We want to manage, reduce the amplitude, reduce the excess energy, and with the other variables in the room, try to, to get a, a smooth curve, a smoother uh, frequency response curve. So some of the energy leaves the cabinet. I mean, we don't, we, obviously we don't get it all. Some of the energy hits the cabinet wall and then comes back out the front and a lot of the energy is absorbed in the inside. So that's basically how a diaphragmatic wor uh, absorber works. Now, standard diaphragmatic absorbers just use a single wall construction all the way around. We've changed that with our technology. We've added multiple layers to the wall. Why? And we separated each layer with a damping compound. So we we want to make the cabinet with our diaphragmatic absorber as rigid as possible. What does that do? Well, we all know with speaker cabinets that rigid cabinets don't move as much. If they don't move, they don't produce sound because vibrations produce sound. 
So we want our cabinet to be uh, as rigid as possible. In fact, we use seven layers of material in our cabinets. So our cabinet is very inert. It doesn't move. It forces, by being so inert and not moving, it forces our two walls to move more. So we make the cabinet more rigid, we make the cabinet stronger, and that forces the two front walls to work more when sound pressure energy strikes them. So we get a greater slowing, if you will, at the beginning of the whole sound process with diaphragmatic absorption. So diaphragmatic absorption has been around for years. It's time tested and proven. People use it a lot. We've taken it, I think, two or three or maybe four steps farther and really um, give it some uh, horsepower, if you will, uh, to it. One of my friends who, who's kind of a car nut, he says, well, you, you just put a bigger engine inside the diaphragmatic absorbers uh, technology so it, it, does, it runs more, it has more horsepower. So that's the analogy he likes to use, and I guess it fits. Thank you.